Hello and welcome to this uh, CNBC Africa special where we have a special lens focused right in on the country of uh, Zimbabwe. It's a story of the ages, a story we've seen unfolding over the past three decades or so and has fascinated uh, all of us. Here on CNBC Africa today, we are trying to get a sense of where the country is going as we wind down 2020 and look forward into 2021. And uh, for that conversation, we joined uh, by the Minister of uh, Finance, uh, Professor Mutulik Mube. Prof, thank you. Uh, for joining us this afternoon. I think for the benefit thank of our much. listeners, thank you, sir. For the benefit of our listeners, I think, given that you have presented two overarching documents that spell out where Zimbabwe is headed in the next few years, I wanted us, first of all, to begin with the short-term one, which in this instance is the budget, before we move into the long-term plan, which is the National Development Strategic Plan. On that budget, Minister, let's just reiterate again the numbers that you are focusing on, the key ones, obviously. We're talking GDP, we're talking inflation. I want to talk a little bit about that exchange rate as well, because it's key to everything, right? Yes, indeed. Well, we expect a better 2021. Uh, this year, obviously, like most countries, we suffered negative growth due to the pandemic, and we're still recovering from the drought, from the climate shock. But in 2021, we expect... Uh, a strong recovery. We expect a GDP growth of 7.4 percent, which will then take up 5 percent over the next uh, three years. Then, looking at inflation again, we've managed to tame inflation, and the real, uh, uh, you know, um, the silver bullet was in stabilizing the exchange rate in the first place, which has been stable uh, around the ballpark of 81 Zimbabwe dollars to one uh, US dollar. Uh, so, having stabilized the exchange rate and reduce the premium between that official uh, uh, exchange rate and the power rate that is in turn stabilized prices. Inflation has dropped sharply and we expect that in 2021, uh, in fact, month on month inflation will be in single digit and by year 2021, year on year inflation in domestic currency will also be in single digit. Professor, what are the assumptions that you are uh, are pin, uh, yeah, that you are pinning on to those numbers that you have given us. I mean, I'm sure you would have seen uh, some people's commentary on your numbers and suggesting that uh, there may well be numbers that you want to attain, but the reality might well be that you might not be able to get those numbers. Well, I think the reality is going to be positive indeed, and they will, they will bear some in terms of the forecast in the budget. Uh, the one big assumption is that we'll have a, a, a much better uh, outturn on the climate front, in terms of rainfall uh, in this season, is, it looks looking promising already because really we're still reeling from the impact of the drought. Uh, so importing food, basic food, uh, that should be, I think, uh, in a way, it should be in a much better situation in 2021. We expect a much better agricultural uh, season. Uh, that also means that the power situation is going to be very different, uh, a much better power supply to support our mining sector and, and industry. We also continue to support the, the auction market, uh, which is, uh, has caused a very stable uh, exchange rate. So exchange rate stability and overall macroeconomic stability is key to economic growth. Uh, just just right, right now, as we, you know, we, we are in the last quarter of the year, we've seen companies' uh, volumes uh, uh, you know, going up, what they're looking at cement companies, what they're looking at the financial services sector, uh, the food manufacturing uh, sector, and many other uh, companies right across the board, their volumes are up, not just because we've reopened the economy, or opened the economy up after the COVID lockdown, but because of the stable market environment. All, the, all, the, all those factors are critical to make sure to achieve these kind of growth figures and inflation figures which are facing downwards. Yeah. Minister, so if I look at uh, those uh, uh, assumptions that you have given, so it's rain, it's power and stability on the auction front, which uh, presupposes that exports are going to be stable and higher. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you're expecting on the, or, or the, or the export front before we talk about the exchange rate. Again, second year running, we expect a good performance in, 20, in 2020 for a start. We expect a current account surplus of the order of 1.2 billion US dollars. Last year, with the current account surplus of about 900 million, where again, exports are exceeding uh, imports. Uh, exports being well over 7 billion uh, uh, US dollars. So, so this is a very good picture indeed. And in 2021, again, we expect 
a current account surplus uh, of a similar order, just over a billion uh, US dollars. What is driving this? What is driving this is the introduction of the domestic currency, the Zimbabwe dollar, which has restored the competitiveness of, of industry. Uh, companies are beginning to export and export aggressively, uh, but also we have seen some kind of import substitution also taking place where, where companies are now making certain products which were previously uh, imported. So it's interesting to see both a, an import substitution effect of the currency as well as an export competitiveness effect of the currency. On all of this augurs well for, as I said, for the balance of payment position as well as overall currency stability as we become a net exporter of, of goods. Yeah, and all these things, Minister, are based on what will happen locally within Zimbabwe. You're not mentioning anything about foreign direct investment or indeed the other uh, 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 position that uh, many African countries are banking on, which is uh, some form of debt relief. Let's begin with foreign direct investment. You see no impact at all or increases in terms of money that comes into Zimbabwe? Oh, yes, we expect uh, foreign direct investment to continue trickling in, especially in the natural resources sector. Uh, in the mining sector, because you, you go where the mineral is, and we're very generous uh, investment incentives, investment conditions, and also the stability is key to attracting uh, foreign investors. Um, we've also launched the Victoria Falls uh, Stock Exchange, which is a uh, US dollar denominated uh, in nature. Uh, and we will still have the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, which is a domestic uh, currency denominated. And the whole point about the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange is to attract foreign investors, especially in the mining sector. We expect it to be a very, a, a, a platform for investment uh, in Southern Africa generally uh, for the mining sector in terms of raising capital through this, the, the, this platform. So we expect uh, foreign direct investment to continue trickling in. But what is critical is the continued with the stability that uh, we've put in place that we've engendered so far, but also to continue improving the environment for doing business for, for, for foreign in investors. Um, then on the in second matter, on uh, debt relief, uh, uh, our situation in Zimbabwe is that we're in areas uh, mainly with uh, uh, creditors such as the African Development Bank, uh, the World Bank, and the Paris Club uh, creditors. Our first order of business is to make sure that we, we restore uh, our credit status with the IFIs, the AFDB, and then the, the World Bank, uh, but also the European Investment Bank as a third uh, IFI. So in, in 2021, we'll begin in inner inest to start paying the, the token payments uh, in terms of the, the areas, in terms of the debts that we owe, and then we'll begin to develop a fully fledged areas clearance roadmap. We had slowed down in 2020 because really we're focusing on the pandemic and focusing on, uh, uh, you know, make sure that we can import food. I wouldn't want as a minister of finance to, to be going around the world to borrow. Uh, uh, so as to pay off creditors, really it was to borrow, to support the economy, to support investment, and also to put in protection. So, yeah. so all of on those two fronts will, will really accelerate in 2021, both areas clearance, uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, making sure that uh, we continue with the agenda we've set ourselves in attracting foreign direct investment. Yeah. Remind us again, Minister, in terms of uh, the arrears that are still to be paid and, of course, uh, the total amount of debt that uh, Zimbabwe has accumulated. I think maybe let's focus just on the foreign one. Oh, the, the, in terms of foreign arrears, the amount just over $6 uh, billion. Uh, in terms of overall uh, foreign debt, uh, we're looking at uh, the order of about $9 billion in terms of overall debt. Zimbabwe currently uh, sits at about at about 78% of the gross domestic product. Uh, so that's now, and it is our desire to lower foreign debt. Uh, on the domestic front, uh, we're in a very comfortable position. Domestic debt is, is quite small, it's less than 3% of GDP. But it is really the foreign debt aspect that we want to focus on and, and reduce it. Uh, and we're determined to do so from 2021 going forward. When do you anticipate, Minister, you'll be in a position where you have cleared uh, these uh, foreign areas uh, before we talk about uh, perhaps a, a restructuring of the, of the foreign debt itself? Uh, well, I can't give a date, but it's, it, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, really. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we, are, we want to finesse our areas clearance options in the first place. Uh, we have uh, two options in the main, uh, which is basically to work with the creditors in the first place. Uh, and also 
uh, get into a um, uh, program with the IMF to make sure that we can work with the talk on some of our targets and giving, you know, how people have achieved those targets in a better position to then work with the creditors to structure a, a restructuring. But the other option, of course, is to, for us in Zimbabwe to seek a, talk to a third party, maybe even a commercial institution, uh, to give us the, the basically the, the resources that we need to fill the gap in our areas with the World Bank and, and after the World Bank and, and then the European Investment Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then we borrow that, the, those resources to be able to clear. But that's really the first step. The second step is then to, to uh, is, is then to deal with the uh, Paris Club partners, Paris Club creditors. Uh, we go through the normal Paris Club uh, restructuring process. Of course, we're acutely aware an option is concerned once you go the commercial route, uh, you know, creditors have to ring party parcel. It creates difficulties when it comes to the second phase of the process uh, with the Paris Club. We are quickly aware of, uh, of that as we consider these two uh, areas clearance uh, options. How are those relationships, Minister, with uh, the uh, Paris Club as well as uh, the uh, World Bank and uh, the IMF? I raised the question because I have seen uh, a couple of instances where uh, there have been differences in terms of your, your figures, for instance, and those from uh, the World Bank uh, in particular. I think if I remember correctly, uh, looking at uh, the growth forecast for next year. And uh, also the fact that you have had uh, quite uh, some time now trying to negotiate with the IMF to come up with a program that they can support and help Zimbabwe get back on its feet? Uh, starting with the figures, uh, uh, Godfrey, uh, thank you very much. Um, oh, look, there will always be differences in forecasts. That, that's normal in economics. So we have a, a growth figure of 7.4%. Uh, the World Bank, for instance, is a different figure, close of 10%. The IMF also is a different figure. Uh, the African Development Bank has a, has a different figure. Also, the OECD Development Center in, in Paris has a different figure as well. And that applies to so many other African countries and countries around the world. That is normal. But really, the message really is one, though, which is that we expect economic recovery in 2021. Mm -hmm. That is the message. Of course, the extent is then governed by the figure. For, why, why is our figure high uh, for Zimbabwe? Uh, uh, our figure is high is because uh, you know uh, uh, we're coming from a low base in the sense that we've had two years of negative growth and yet the, 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 the other institutions probably feel that's not adequate to give us that kind of high figure. Oh, by the way, the, the figures I mentioned of minus 10%, those were the 2020 figures, right. acting as a base, which would then lower the IMF and World Bank forecast to somewhere between uh, you know, 3 and 4%. That's what they're focusing for 2021, mm -hmm. while we're focusing 7.4%. Um, uh, 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 so really it's about, but that's really the difference, is how far down are we coming from in terms of uh, in terms of growth, but also in terms of the growth assumptions, the climate around uh, you know uh, the impact of the pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen pandemic on the country. All those are, are are issues. Now, in terms of then the you, you talk about the program S and P program. Oh, oh yes, we have got very very good relations with the IMF on that. In fact, I'm I'm speaking to them again this afternoon uh, on that. Uh, the, there's a new team uh, that's on board, and we will resume our negotiations, which had, by the way, slowed down by, by, by COVID and also by the change in the team, uh, in the rotation in the team. So we'll resume those, and we expect them to, to visit uh, Zimbabwe uh, early next year, uh, certainly in the next, in the first two months of the year, for us to continue our deliberations on uh, you know, how to conduct Article 4, as well as how to then calibrate uh, the staff monitoring program going forward, which, which was delayed, as I say, by COVID-19, as well as the climate shocks. Yeah. And then there also some of the reforms, shocks, especially around the currency. But we're, we're over the hump now with this stability, uh, uh, we can have very fruitful negotiations. And I, and I look forward to those uh, deliberations. Yeah, and it will be important, of course, uh, for those negotiations, those deliberations uh, to align your numbers with them, isn't it? Oh, oh for, for sure. You know what, focus are focus. Uh, you, you focus can be revised uh, either up or down by either side. There, there's no problem there. Uh, I think the, the problem is about uh, uh, targets going, the message around those targets. Uh, uh, you know, in case I say that the, the main message uh, uh, among all these figures is that there is a recovery next year. And that is a message right across 
uh, uh, almost all the African countries and also the entire world, we all expect a better 2021 in terms of economic growth. And, and that's the most important message. Yeah. At the beginning, you spoke of a trickling of uh, foreign direct investment, and I think the issues are well known in terms of why there's that trickling. Uh, one of the key issues, of course, is that is the actions that you have to take as a government and as minister yourself in terms of, number one, what you can do on the budget front as well as the finances of the country. And also, secondly, the politics around the country to, to, to present the country as a stable investment destination. Let's talk about the key things that you are focusing on, one on the uh, finances front and then also on the political side of it. Because it, sometimes you keep hearing all these other disturbances where there are alleged uh, transgressions on human rights and all those other things. Thank, thank you very much. On the fiscal front, on the budget deficit front, certainly the country is, is in very, very good shape. Again, for the second year running, uh, uh, Zimbabwe again will record a very small deficit of the order of half a percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. Most people wonder and say, oh, Minister, why, why don't you have large deficits? Because we need to finance development, we need to finance growth and so forth. The trouble is that when we are in arrears with, uh, with the creditors, and can borrow easily, can access credit, uh, you know, credit lines easily. Then you have to live within your means, and that's what we're doing as, as a country. That's why you find that we're not borrowing much, uh, but also we're not running running large budget deficits because we, we can't borrow from anyone easily to finance the budget deficit. So, so we are living within our means, and it's going well so far. So I expect a small uh, budget deficit in 2020 of half a percent of GDP. Uh, uh, then for 2021, we expect a budget deficit of uh, minus 1.5% 1, 1 uh, maximum. Certainly, uh, uh, we'll stay within the SADIC uh, limits of 3%. So 1.5% is, is a very good uh, number indeed. And we're able to through fiscal discipline uh, framework that we we'll put in place and also make sure that we don't rely anymore and any longer on the Reserve Bank overdraft uh, facility. So, so indeed, our fiscal position looks 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 very strong indeed, and we, we, I think that's also evidenced by the resources we have now been applying on infrastructure, uh, on the infrastructure front. We expect to invest uh, well over three hundred and fifty billion dollars uh, in in the infrastructure development program, uh, and, and we expect this to really change landscape in terms of our roads, uh, dam, dam construction, and power and, and power supply. Uh, for example, also investment in schools and in health care uh, centers. Now, turning to the issue of, of the, the politics, is Zimbabwe is a very peaceful, is a very stable country uh, politically. And I think that if you compare to other countries, you, 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 you have to borne out that really at the end of the day, uh, Zimbabwe is a, a peaceful uh, country uh, that respects the rule of law, uh, that respects uh, uh, human rights. There may be challenges here and there from time to time, a bit of noises, but at the end of the day, we're very peaceful and law-abiding uh, country and with law-abiding citizens. Yeah. And investors are welcome uh, uh, to invest in Zimbabwe because they can enforce their contract. Uh, it is not difficult at all. And in fact, as one of the, 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 uh, the proofs that we're serious about it, uh, we have uh, agreed to uh, you know, compensate uh, farmers who lost their land uh, during the first uh, track land reform program in the early 2000s. Uh, we are compensating improvements on those farms of uh, uh, worth 3.5 billion US, and all this goes a long way to show we are serious about observing the rule of your law and indeed property rights in the process. Yeah, Minister, before you go, it would be remiss of me if we don't talk about uh, your National Development Strategy 1, uh, the five-year program and uh, the kind of targets that you are looking for there. I want to put that on one side and juxtapose it against uh, the expectation that we know many Zimbabweans have of a return to some kind of uh, normalcy. So if you could perhaps lay it out in terms of uh, what you are seeing in the years ahead in terms of, uh, of uh, investment in the key economic sectors and when life will be normal again in Zimbabwe. Well, the National Development Strategy really one covers the, the next five years, 2021 to 2025, and our national budget is anchored on it in terms of, of pillars. Uh, what we seek to desire uh, to achieve through the end, uh, National Development Strategy is an upper middle income economy by year 2030. We will launch a second uh, National Development Strategy after 2025 to finish off our, our, our program and get to that destination. Uh, really, the, the pillars of strategy are to make sure that we can have inclusive and, and, and uh, growth 
uh, that leaves no place and uh, no one behind. And our devolution agenda is critical in bringing up all regions of Zimbabwe to come up. Uh, but also want to make sure the stable environment is also pursued so that it's easy for investors to understand where the returns are coming from and that they are, they are, they are settled. And that will keep the currency stable and reduce uh, certain the currency volatility. We want to continue investing in infra infrastructure in the ICT sector and the whole digital economy. We'll promote the, the mining sector. We want to build a $12 billion mining sector industry in the next uh, uh, two, uh, the, two, two, three years. We want to continue to support beneficiation within that sector. In the in industrial sector, we want to promote the domestication of value chains so that domestic companies can participate a lot more in the value chains towards uh, fi final products. And this includes, by the way, the resuscitation of Cisco Steel, which is a steel manufacturing uh, company, and supporting our car uh, car in industry, which is which is in the past a very good uh, product. Uh, we also want to continue improving our external relations to clear our areas. We want to uh, do further investment in our human capital, our universities, making sure that we invest in productive education, sort of education that results in the production of of goods and services. We have an ambitious agenda. Mm -hmm. and really want to make sure that this is the agenda that shapes a Zimbabwe socio-economic landscape all towards this upper middle income status and get us back to normalcy uh, that you described. Uh, thank you very much. Within the five years, Minister? Within the, within the five years, we work very hard. Of course, our traje trajectory, uh, Godfrey, is 10 years to get to upper middle income status. Uh, at the end of five years, we're able to evaluate uh, to see how far we've gone. In fact, that's what is different about this national development strategy is that it is results only oriented the right targets each ministry each government department each area has specific targets that are monitored uh, annually uh, if it, uh, a few times within each year in fact but annually there's a report and then there's recalibration but it's, we're focusing on results and we're using a results based framework to make sure that we implement this strategy successfully Professor Mtuli Nube, Finance Minister of uh, Zimbabwe, thank you uh, for joining us and thank you for explaining the detail uh, behind that national development strategy and where the country is going into 2021. That's uh, it from our special focus today on Zimbabwe. Until next time, goodbye.